It's been an entire year since I made the last and only wedding dress I've made. I think I made it back in March and it's June. So it's about time that I make another one. A few weeks ago, Joann's was kind enough to message me and asked if they could send me a gift card to use on their new collection of fabric they have that they just released. And of course I said yes. So with my gift card, I bought the most beautiful fabric from this. It's kind of like a bridal fabric-ish collection. I'd have to look up the name. I'll put the name on it. I can't pronounce it, <laughs> but I got this beautiful lace floral fabric with the gift card that they sent me. And it's just the best fabric for a wedding dress. It's kind of like hibiscus flowers. I imagine using this fabric for like a beach wedding or something like that. As of when I'm filming this, I just posted my summer gown video yesterday morning. And I think I'm going to use use that pattern for this dress again because the bodice that I made turned out so beautiful. Let me show you that dress. This was only my second time doing a cupped bodice like this and it turned out so beautiful. Go watch that video if you haven't already. But I'm going to use the same pattern again because it was just a fun new bodice technique that I had rarely done in the past. And I can imagine it's so good with this dress. I have a vision in my head. Unfortunately, I'm not the best at sketching. I tried sketching it out, but my sketches just, they're just not good. So I have typed out my vision instead, and I'm going to go off of what I've typed in my notes app. <laughs> but here's another look at the fabric. It's very beautiful. I got five yards of it. And yeah, we are going to go ahead and start cutting out the fabric. I just picked up this ivory satin from the store. I just felt like it needed something softer instead of stark white, so I did this. But I'm trying to decide, I think I might actually use this side of it. I need to see what it looks like with that draped on it. But yeah, here's the pattern that I just made for my summer dress and I'm going to cut it out really quickly. These ones, the cups, have to be cut on the bias so that it has room to like stretch over. I like how these are turning out. They're turning out better than the first time I tried it. I'm thinking though that I want to drape the lace fabric over it a second layer because right now it's kind of nude looking and I want it to be more white. So I'm gonna drape more on top of it. It looks good. It's just a little bit more layered now. You can see the ruching on it a little bit. Now I just gotta replicate it on the other one. I wanna show you guys, let me move you. I wanna show you the difference between the one I did gathered and then this is just with one layer it just looks better like this so that's just one layer the satin and that and then this is this plus two extra layers kind of gathered on there so it's a little bit more white there's a little bit of a glare right now it's just like i don't know i just like to look better so i have to do the same thing on this one and what i do is i get two layers of this fabric so i have two layers of this and i have this and I'm going to, on the corner of it, sew it like that. So I'm gonna sew it along this edge right here and then we'll flip it inside out and do the gathering. So I have this and I'm gonna sew it down. And then I need to cut around the edge right here. Now it's like this and I'm going to flip it like that. And then I could, if I wanted to do it, just lay it flat like that, but I'm gathering it a little. So I'm kind of just lifting it up on the edges like this and then I'll sew it down. So it's all sewn down and ruched. And then you just gotta cut along the excess on this edge and you've got a beautiful cut just like that. It's pulling a little bit because I made it a little too tight, but it, it will be good once we add it to the dress. So now I have both of these. Now I can sew together the rest of the bodice, but I think I'm going to cut out another layer of this fabric first because I think one layer is just, it doesn't make it opaque enough. So I'm going to go ahead and cut this out one more time so that I have two layers of the fabric. Where's my scissors? Oh. And then I'll have the rest of the yardage for the skirt. And I think for the skirt, we're probably just gonna gather it up. I haven't really decided yet. And I'm thinking I'm gonna do a slit as well. It's gonna be so fun.
it's so tedious putting all of these together and it looks extra nude on camera it's really not like right there it looks very ivory but in this lighting it looks nude they're all basted together i'm really annoyed because i wanted to stabilize it add some interfacing and i can't find it anywhere i've searched this entire house this entire room for my interfacing because i know i have a huge roll of it and it's gone so we're just gonna it's just gonna i don't know now i'm just sewing down boning channels with the seam allowance Going back to the cups, I'm just gonna bias bind this edge right here so that it's nice and clean. It looks so good with the bias binding on there. It looks professional. Just gotta do it one more time. the lining i'm using this it's like a cotton silk that i got from dharma trading company i'm going to do i think a double layer since i don't have my interfacing i'll do a double layer of this for the lining here's the outer layer and then this is the double lining that i just made the next step of this process is just to add the lining like that and i'll sew along that top edge and then we'll flip it out now that it's sewn together we need to clip the edges that way it's just easier to turn it right side out so you got to go all the way along the curves and everything clip them off and it gets rid of the bulk for this one i was feeling loops so i have these loops pinned in before i turn out this lining and i'm going to sew them down and then i need to make a few more to put on the other side and i just used the satin that i've got the ivory satin we're trying it on and it looks so good the back i ended up not using the very back panel so that it's more of an open back i love it it's a little bit wrinkly i'm trying not to be too annoyed by that but I think it's so cute. So now I'm going to make the sleeves. I'm working on the sleeves. I cut out a 30 by 11 rectangle for each one. I gathering both ends. This is the gathered bottom. And then this one I'm gonna gather a bit loosely because I want it to hang like so. And then I have this really, really thin elastic that I'm weaving through it. So that's my vision. And it's just gonna be like these small loose puff sleeves. I personally don't like when sleeves for things are detached. So I'm just gonna like tap this in place on the underarm. I did make the elastic loose up here so there's still gonna be range of motion but it will just be attached because I just I don't like when it's not attached. I bought this huge thing of pearls so with the sleeves done I have a vision in mind. I, there's like a thousand pearls in here and I have an idea. It's probably gonna be pretty time consuming but I want it to like cascade down with pearls so, so like a thick thicker band of like all the different sizes of pearls up here and then kind of just trickle down a little. I think it would add something special and then add small pearls onto the sleeve and I probably might put some on the skirt as well. I think I'm gonna call it good with the pearls for now. I might add a few more on the bodice later, but I wanna get working on the skirt. I don't even know how many there are right here, but it's a lot. It took me several hours to do this, but I think it was worth it. It looks so beautiful. I don't have as much of this as I was hoping for the skirt. I have, I don't know how much this is. I would guess maybe four yards, maybe a little less than four yards, three and a half. Regardless, this is just gonna be gathered. I am going to do a side slit, but we'll worry about that later. I wish I had more. I wanted it really full. I'm just gonna gather this. I think I might use the full length in the back so that there's like a little train and then it will gradually get shorter. Oh, I have to keep in mind though that my heels are four and a half inches tall. So maybe I'll hem it last. I think I'm gonna cut out the satin first though. I'm going to do a paneled skirt for the satin because it seems less bulky. It just seems like the easiest thing. I really need to learn how to properly do a slit in a flowy skirt because it never works out for me. At this point I've accepted defeat and I'm just gonna have it be kind of wonky but I need to learn because my prom dress looked bad. This is not looking the best. How do I do one? I know like there's a seam there but it's just like ugh. I don't care. It's gonna be covered by this lace anyway. So I gathered all of this lace. It's all gathered on top of the satin skirt and now I just need to sew it down to the bodice. It's looking so beautiful. Like in my head, this is exactly what I pictured. It's the perfect amount of gathers and yeah, I love it. Now I suspected that the skirt would be a little sheer and see-through because um, crepe back satin is just really sheer when you use um, a light color. So I have a couple yards of ivory chiffon and I think I'm going to add a lining skirt 
dirt to the inside. A, it will be soft. B, it will hide the seams. C, it will make it a little less sheer, but it's not gonna be totally opaque, but I don't think that's the biggest deal ever. I'm literally only wearing this for a video and photo shoot. So before I do that, I have the skirt and the bodice sewn together. So right now, this is what the inside looks like, and I'm going to bias bind this together, and then I will add the chiffon skirt. Actually, no, scratch that. I'm going to add the chiffon, and then I'm gonna bias bind. I'm heading to go finish up this dress. I'm on the final steps. I need to really just finish up the skirts. Everything else is done, and I cannot wait for it. I'm trying to make it as fast as I can so that I can get a TikTok video out tomorrow because I posted the bodice today. So wish me luck. I'm gonna go try to finish it really quick and take you guys along. Walking in, it just, oh, it's so beautiful. I'm in love with it so much. What we're not gonna talk about is the fact that this room looks like a bomb exploded. I need to really clean it when it's done. This is where we're at with the skirt. I basically, I need to hem and add a zipper and also do the slit in the chiffon and put the slit in this stuff. Since this, can you see me? Since this is, it's in 0.5, so if it looks a little funny, it's because it looks a little funny. But since this is tool and it's not going to fray, I'm gonna do something a little bit sacrilegious here. I'm just gonna cut a slit. It's not on a seam or anything. I honestly don't care. It's gonna be fine. I mean, I might like tag it in a few spots so that it stays together, or I might leave it loose. It depends on how good the slit turns out. I'll start it a little lower. I'm sure there was a better way to do this, but honestly, I don't really care. Love that. The chiffon, I can't do that for. I'll probably cut the chiffon and then just zigzag the edge because I just want to finish this dress. I'm too lazy to do it properly. Okay, when I do invisible zippers, I don't know if this is the right way to do it, but it's just what works for me. If I'm doing a skirt that has multiple layers, for example, obviously this one has three, I'm only adding the zipper onto this satin layer. And then for the closure on this one, there's not gonna be one. It's just, I'll sew it down lower and it will just kind of be, it, like you'll see what I mean when it's done. Like it will just be open right there. The zipper is just on the satin part and it's just the easiest for me to do. So I'm sewing that in right now. I'm currently zigzagging the chiffon, um, what's it called? Slit, but I'm zigzagging the slit so that it doesn't fray. 